Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going through, well this is the first video of the Taylor, uh, Taylor McCall um, in that series, uh, and I'll be going over the geometry of the cone and kind of what the uh, variables are uh, that we'll be using for the coordinate systems and stuff like that, and for the velocities. Uh, okay, so up here I've drawn in two dimensions and Cartesian coordinates, uh, just a triangle. So we have the z-axis here, the y-axis here, and the x-axis is coming out of the page. Uh, actually, it is going into the page, um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, you can see that if we have a 2D triangle. If we rotate this triangle around the z-axis, you'll end up with a cone in three dimensions. Um, okay, now to describe a point in this plane, like anywhere in this plane, if I just put a green point in here, you describe it with, um, in this case, a yz coordinate, um, ignoring the fact that this is, so just saying this is a 2D coordinate system. Uh, so you describe it with a yz coordinate. Now imagine we have, um, imagine that we have a shock uh, in this, if we have a shock from starting from the vertex of this wedge and coming out, if I wanted to describe the entire line of points along this shock, um, I would have to describe it with, at each point here, with a separate yz coordinate. So a better way to do this is to define um, an r coordinate, so a radial coordinate, where along this line the radial coordinate is um, is the same, or it's a different coordinate system, so that you don't have to describe them all with different y's and z's, um, y and z coordinate points. So it's more convenient to describe a point in this space using spherical coordinates. Um, which instead of x, y, z are going to be r, theta, phi. So uh, if we move over to here, um, <coughs> so I have a Cartesian coordinate system x, y, z in black, and then the spherical coordinate system r, theta, phi in blue. So I have a random point, a green point up there, just a random point in space. It's going to be in the first quadrant, so in the positive x, y, z quadrant. Um, so the first, so to define it in x, y, z space, it would just be a, a coordinate would just be, uh, you know, an x value, a y value, and a z value. In um, spherical space, the first rotation that you can do is um, out in the x, y plane, and you call that rotation phi. And then the next rotation you can do is in the z, y plane, and that is uh, the rotation is going to be theta. And then the next one is to describe how far out um, from the origin is, and that's going to be a distance r. So you have phi, theta, and r describing the point, the green point, as opposed to x, y, z coordinates now. Now assuming, um, getting rid of this, um, just think about this in the y, z plane now, and don't worry about the x-axis. So if I draw, if I draw my cone, it's like a vertical cone now, just in the, uh, in the yz plane, you can see that we can describe we can describe the point, the green point here, with the coordinates theta and r. Assuming now that the green point is in the yz plane and is not coming out in the x plane, so we have this. What we have is a uh, a quasi two dimensional um, figure essentially, so that it's it's a cone. Um, which is three-dimensional, but we can describe, we can say that it's a two-dimensional um, representation of the cone, um, and that it's, only, so it's only in two dimensions. It's really a three-dimensional object, but it's only in, it, we could say it's quasi-two-dimensional because it, it looks like it's in two dimensions, and you can describe with two-dimensional coordinates, theta and r, and since we can describe the cone by rotating around, around um, using the angle phi, so around the z-axis, uh, we, can, we can get the cone, um, but since it's symmetric, it's axisymmetric around the z-axis, um, we can just describe it as a two-dimensional figure. Okay, so what I did then here is I took this cone, 2D cone, and I just rotated it down, and that's the solid red lines that you see here are the cone uh, surfaces. And this is in two dimensions again. Okay, so I have the cone surfaces in red here. I have the black shock and then this point, this green point, is just an arbitrary point in the shock layer, so between the shock and the body surface. Um, so the way that we define the angles that we'll be using are 
Um, so this is the this cuts the cone in half, and then you have this uh, angle between the horizontal and the cone surface, and that's called the semi-vertex angle, um, or the cone angle. So that's theta sub c, also labeled over here. And then the distance, or the angle between the horizontal and the shock is the shock angle, or theta sub s, here. And then the distance, or the, okay, the angle theta from the horizontal to, um, to the ray that connects the vertex to the arbitrary point so it's an arbitrary angle, and that's just going to be theta. Uh, okay, the distance from uh, the vertex to the point is r. Again, following this convention up here. So, uh, so again, so the rotation from the vertical axis here out to the to the surface is going to be theta, and that's why these are all angles are all theta. And then the distance out to the point, same with here, is going to be r in both cases. Um, this point can be moving since it's not since we don't have a three-dimensional object. We're in the, we're only in the two-dimensional plane now. There's two velocities associated uh, with this point in spherical coordinates, and one of them is the radial velocity that is uh, parallel to the ray from the vertex to the point going out this way, and then we have the theta velocity that's uh, perpendicular to the radial velocity, and uh, and that's going. Uh, it, it'll be, if you're at the surface, it'll be normal to the surface. Uh, so these are some of the uh, definitions of the variables that we'll be using in the derivation. Uh, definitely v theta, vr, and then these angles, thetas, um, you'll need to know. Uh, and in the next video, I'll be going over some assumptions, um, which are extremely important to recognize when you're going through the derivation. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.